Hi. Hello again. In the Proclaimers book, page 70, we've just dealt with Rutherford and other leaders at Brooklyn Bethel are thrown in jail and some of the brothers are being beaten up and or assaulted and mobbed and some of them mm -hmm. uh, vilified. That's true. That's all true. Mm -hmm. But we dealt with the fact of why they were being treated that way in the last video. This section is what was were the rest of the brothers doing during this time that the leaders were in jail. And it's entitled, Keeping the Home Fires <coughs> Burning. Back in Brooklyn, an executive committee was appointed to take charge of the work. A chief concern of the brothers appointed was to keep the watchdown in circulation. The Bible students everywhere certainly needed all the spiritual encouragement that could be given them. In fact, during this entire testing season, and that's in quotation marks, not one issue of the Watchtower failed to appear in print. What was the spirit at headquarters? Thomas Bud Sullivan, who later served as a member of the governing body, recalled, quote, It was my privilege to visit Brooklyn uh, Bethel in the late summer of 1918 during the brothers' sorry, <coughs> in incarceration. Uh, the brothers in charge of the work at Bethel were in no wise fearful or downhearted. In fact, the reverse was true. They were optimistic and confident that Jehovah would give his people the victory ultimately. It was I was privileged to be at the breakfast table on Monday morning when the brothers sent out on weekend appointments gave their reports. A fine picture of the situation was obtained. In every case, the brothers were confident, waiting for Jehovah to direct their activities further. End of quote. Many problems, however, were encountered. World War I was still raging. There were shortages of paper supplies and coal, which were vitally needed for the work at headquarters. With patriotism at fever pitch, there was considerable animosity against the society. The Bible students were viewed as traitors. Under these extreme circumstances, it appeared impossible to continue operations at Brooklyn. So the executive committee, after consulting with other brothers, told the Brook sold the Brooklyn Tabernacle and closed the Bethel home. On August 26, 1918, the operations were transferred back to Pittsburgh to an office building at Federal and Reliance Streets. Nevertheless, a good spirit prevailed. Martha Meredith recalled, quote, We in Pittsburgh got together and decided we were going to keep the home fires burning until the brethren got out of prison. At that time, the Brooklyn office was moved to Pittsburgh, so the brethren got busy writing articles for the Watchtower and had it printed. When the watchtowers were ready to be sent out, we sisters wrapped them up and sent them out to the people. End of quote. The Bible students had faced some severe trials since the Gentile times had ended in the fall of 1914. Could they continue to survive? Did they really have the love of God in their hearts or not? Would they firmly hold on to the Lord and his truth, as Russell had cautioned, or would they let go? End of the chapter. As, as usual, yeah, end of chapter. Mm -hmm. By the way, next time it is mm -hmm. Advertise the King and the Kingdom, chapter oh, 7. Very familiar. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm keeping in mind that we know something of this if we've read any Watchtower history. We have the superficial reading of the Watchtower history at this point. They are made to be heroes here, obviously, mm -hmm. all of them. Yeah. The ones in jail and the ones out. They're all doing the right thing, waiting on Jehovah, mm -hmm. waiting for Jehovah to direct their activities further. There's several phrases here that just jump out at you, though. This mm -hmm. The theme season. of the chapter is, well, the title is entitled, A Time of Testing, 1914 to 1918, mm -hmm. during this entire, quote, testing season, unquote. Yeah. What are they being tested by? Well, they set up the the test themselves. It's just surviving seems to be the test. Are they going to keep putting the watchtower out? 
and that's proof of love of Lord. Yeah. Uh, and um, truth, even the, though what they were printing was, has been negated as not truth. Well, they themselves have now agreed that it wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't food that would nourish Jehovah's Witnesses today. Hence, it's not in print anymore, and it hasn't been most of it for yeah. about eighty or ninety years. And because it's so, if if you take a biblical testing on on the basis of prophecy, they failed. Yeah, Are they you... failed. They don't have any short term prophecies that came true. So you're basing it, I, I detect, on Deuteronomy 18. We all kind of know mm -hmm. the Deuteronomy 18 test. Do they, do they utter prophecies in the name of Jehovah and do those prophecies come true? But the one we're missing is the prior test. There's another test less familiar to us if we're witnesses, the Deuteronomy 13 test, mm -hmm. which is about continuity. That is, if the prophets are saying go after other gods, if they're breaking continuity with the past, Yeah. They are not true prophets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so the, you really need both Deuteronomy thirteen and eighteen. Yeah, you need both. One is mm -hmm. short term prophetic fulfillment, mm -hmm. because the prophets, of course, were were prophesying things that were sometimes a hundred years ahead. But the test was: Are there prophecies about the immediate future coming true? Yeah, and I mean they made a lot of short term prophecies. They did as tests. Yeah, and they didn't come true. Well, you, in the watch there, yeah, for sure yeah. they didn't come true. But even in the Old Testament, Isaiah, mm -hmm. Jeremiah, and, and the others make short-term predictions as well. Right. And then there's the 13, Deuteronomy 13 test, which is about long-term continuity. So you have long-term continuity is necessary. With what God has already said. Yeah, with the past. Mm -hmm. And short-term prophetic fulfillment. Yeah. By, no t by neither test do the watchtower, does mm -hmm. the watchtower pass at this point. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I couldn't help but think while we were reading this that other groups do similar things. They set up, they set up what they say is the test, and it's usually something they're doing. <laughs> uh, so I remember meeting with Mormons once, and they told me about this test of read this book, their publication, Book of Mormon, and yeah, and you'll get a burning of the bosom. And that will be proof to you that this is true. Yeah. So my question was, well, what happens if I don't get that burning? Well, then it's proof that I'm, I'm just not favorable. I'm not good. There's something wrong with me. Because the proof is that burning. And it'll happen. So either way, they pass the test. That's right. Yeah. So if you set up the limits of that test, and I think the Watchtower does similar things, and other mm -hmm. groups do that too. Seventh-day Adventists, for instance, what test do they set up? Well, you must accept Ellen G. White as the prophet. Mm -hmm. And with that, you must accept that the seventh day is the Sabbath and must keep that Sabbath. And if you don't do that, you're not part of the true yeah. religion. You have to keep Sabbath on Saturday. Right. Mm -hmm. Then there's this... This hmm. sentence at the end of the second paragraph, the one you read, a fine picture of the situation was obtained. In every case, the brothers were confident, waiting for Jehovah to direct their activities further. And uh, what would yeah. what would you judge whether they were being directed by Jehovah by during that period? Yeah, if if you were honest and looked at at the things that failed in the previous things, you would think, okay, not further. He hasn't started working with us yet. He's, he's not working with them. The finished yeah. mystery testifies to that. Just read the book. But they've already got the assumption that God is with them. Yeah. And uh, along with that, you say, well, the finished mystery, that was a one-off. Well, yeah, but you printed a million copies of it and it's distributed them. But it wasn't a one-off. No, they kept going. Yeah. So the millions book comes out two years later. Mm-hmm. Do and they, even, do even, they, are, they, are they reading that to Jehovah's Witnesses today? The Harp and, of God in yeah. 21? And even the stuff prior. Russell's books aren't reprinted. And there's too many things in there that would embarrass you. Right. So you wouldn't reprint them. Well, by the way, that's one big difference with Mormons and, and Seventh-day Adventists. They, they're proud to publish Ellen G. White's writings if they're Adventists. And yeah. you can get all the writings of, of, uh, of Joseph Smith that are available if you know where to go. Yeah. They're still publishing them. What's the difference? The Watchtower has nothing to brag about. Mm -hmm. And then you've got this 
retrojection of the name Jehovah. If you read their publications from that time, you realize all of this familiarity with the divine name is not is just not there. Yeah, so they're presenting it as if you would expect reading the literature back then would sound the same as literature today, and it wouldn't. You don't hear Jehovah, and it's not so frequent on the pages of the literature. What is there is the is the title Lord. They're mm -hmm. talking about the Lord a lot. Yeah. They're also talking about Jesus a lot more than they do now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'll sure. give them credit for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you get to this this gloss over the Gentile times in the last paragraph. Yes. The Bible students had faced some severe trials since the Gentile times had ended. So it's like a, a done deal. We know that's true. That's what they're saying. Did anyone it's teach no. that the Gentile times ended in 1914 besides them? No. Where did they get it from? They got it from Russell and especially from Nelson Barber, okay. uh, who is now is now treated as an apostate in this book mm -hmm. and in yeah. the finished mystery, by the way. So J.C. Rao, we did a video on this. J.C. Mm -hmm. Rao actually talked about the Gentile times, and you know, in in one strange way, he Russell agreed with J.C. Rao. Yeah, because he made it about Jews and Gentiles. Yeah, J.C. Rowell and Russell both shared that that idea that when the Gentile times did expire, were yeah. fulfilled, that the, God's favor would return to the Jews again. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. they've dropped that teaching completely, but yeah. hung on to the date. But with, yeah, with Russell, he puts a date to things, whereas Ryle doesn't do that. But I think even now, witnesses don't think in terms of Jews and Gentiles. It's just everybody's just of nations, you know. Yeah, well, they, there's, there's no they're, no they're, thought of Israel as the people of God. Well, that's why the New World Translation's version of it is so is so neutralized, right? Mm. Which is the appointed times of the nations has replaced Gentile times or mm. times of the Gentiles. Yeah, I don't think they want you to focus on that difference. Not at all. And then there's this last question, the last sentence you read in this chapter, which would be, would they firmly hold on to the Lord and his truth? That's a, all in quotation marks. Mm -hmm. Russell's, Russell's yeah. uh, caution. caution. Okay. They, they, they've quoted twice now in this chapter, the Lord and his truth. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, causes you to chuckle yeah. when you realize that what they're hanging on to, you don't hang on to. Mm -hmm. you, you you don't republish any of these books. Yeah. That should be enough to tell you there's something seriously wrong. Yeah. So the two links we have uh, a video on Deuteronomy, the two chapters we talked about, is predictive accuracy the primary test of a true prophet. And the second was was a uh, Ryle on the Gentile times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See you soon.